Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. It's been some time since we've had a female Calypsonian on Showcase, and we are pleased tonight to present Drupati Ramgunai. Drupati, welcome. Thank you, Alvin. Well, the first thing, 1993 has been a bumper year for you. You've really done well this year. Beside Careless Drivers, what other tunes on your album this year you particularly like that we haven't heard? Um, uh, I must say it's Mochilal, mm -hmm. uh, because of the monster hit that um, KLS Driver made. Mochilal did not play. The, you know, people hardly hear Mochilal outside. Mm -hmm. and I think it's a wonderful song. Well, maybe with a little bit more airplay, people will get familiar with it. Uh, besides, um, well, did you do any traveling this year? Yes, I have done some touring. Mm -hmm. um, Where have you been to? Places like Edmonton, Calgary, uh, Winnipeg, mm -hmm. New York. Uh, What's it like when you, when you travel there? Are you well received? Well, for the longest while, the crowd out there didn't see me. So mm -hmm. with this monster hit, Careless Driver, mm -hmm. they welcome me with open arms. Mm -hmm. So it's been good. Yeah, I have a lot of followers up there, and I guess everybody loves me. <laughs> well, you know, the Let's rest, hope so. <laughs> the rest last year seemed to have really helped in terms of your recording. Um, are you going to continue the trend and come out with an album again in 94? Yes, Alvin, and um, I'm looking forward to 94 album. It will be a monster hit also. You've started to select your material and so on? Well, right now, um, the writer is there. He's calling. Uh, I think it's in the studio right now. It's in the studio. Yeah, just for I to go and do my um, job. All right, but later in the evening, we're going to talk a little bit about a show that you have coming up this weekend. Oh. But I know the, 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 our viewers is waiting anxiously to see what the Calypso life of Drupati Ramgunai is, is like. So we're going to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we'll look at that. I was born in Pinal. I was raised in Pinal. I went to school in Pinal. I even got married in Pinal, so I'm still in Pinal. So you're a foundation member of Pinal, as it were. Yeah, very, a strong foundation too. And I, I heard you come from a very large family. How many uh, children in all? Oh, we are 13 children in all, and we are eight girls and four mm. brothers. Four oh, boys. Eight, eight, eight sisters and, yeah. and four brothers. Yeah, eight sisters and four so brothers. So 13 of you all in all. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, David. And uh, what you uh, in what position? I'm in the fourth position, mm -hmm. fourth to last. Fourth to last. Yeah. yeah. Tell me something, what was it like growing up in a large family? Um, was it, um, you know, always tough to make ends meet and that sort of thing? No, well, I, I think I love a large family. Is very excited in being a large family, having a lot of sisters and a lot of brothers, and it's nice to be. It's it, it, it's really nice to be in a large family. Then mm -hmm. I and enjoy it most of all. What about your own family now? How many do you have so far? Well, Alvin, I only got two mm -hmm. so far. Boy, Akash is nine years, and um, the girl is five. That is the one that I was ruling a bit all the time. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight months in Lamport Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been married now? Uh, uh, I have been married for the past 11 years. Let's start a talk about your early singing career. How early did you start singing or dancing or anything cultural? Well, I have been singing for the past 15 years. And then I started singing in the temples. I started singing. I joined a band. What band was that? Uh, Right now, I really can't say the name right now. Mm -hmm. but, but that was mainly what Hindi songs, ch uh, Chutney type songs, film songs in uh -huh. a band, Indian like in Farewell songs. Nights and thing. And uh -huh. then uh, I started. I entered in national competitions, which I won in um, '83 and '84. That was the um, cultural pageant. So. You you have appeared on Mastana Bahar and Scouting for Talent. No, only Mastana Bahar. Only Mastana Bahar. Yeah. yeah. Let's get to Calypso and Drupati. 
Now, there was a tune called No Jawan, which you sang in 1987. I believe that's one of the first videos that you did. And the first time you sang that, actually, you sang it in Hindi. Tell me a little bit about the tune No Jawan. Well, um, actually, it was the first record I make is Chutney Soka. Mm -hmm. And there I sang the English version and the Hindi version, and also No Jawan was there. And it is a love story, really that depicts a young girl and a young guy. No, Joan is, uh, is really a love story. Remember the English version of No Jawan, you talked about young people should stay off of drugs and that sort of thing. Was, was the English version of that specifically written for the competition or was that always the English translation? No, that, that was specially um, written for the competition. Uh -huh. But it went over well. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> What fears did you have when you first stepped on a stage to sing Calypso? All I could have think was, well, how are the people going to react? And how will I be, how will I be moving on stage? And um, what response I would have been, get, uh, I will get then. Mm -hmm. Do you have any previous dancing experience? No, not really. Mm, but you move well on stage. <laughs> well, it's up to me what for whatever I do on stage. Mm. I guess the movement is there. Let's talk about the tune Chutney Soka because this was the first time that uh, we had heard something where the attempt to marry the two traditional beats, let's say, of Calypso and the Indian rhythms was uh, experimented in such a way on stage. Who composed Chutney Soka and how did you come to, to use it? Well, I did Chutney Soka in the um, Hindi version, and the music arranger, who was Kenny Phillips, um, came up with the idea, why don't we do um, the English version instead, also together in the record. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a lovely idea, and um, I told Kenny to go right ahead with it. And there he gave Carl a call, and. Carl and himself got together and they sat down and they wrote the um, English version in it. Everybody knows that looking at me. Get down and surround me in the party. What 
Can you think of any single incident which encouraged you to stay in Calypso in, after your first year? Well, I always loved Calypso. Alvin, and um, doing Chutney Soka for the first year in 87, in a tent, the, and the crowd response gave me more and more encouragement to do another one. Mm -hmm. That is where I went on doing, um, I did another, um, record, which is Mr. B. Sessa. Mm -hmm. And I know it keeps me going and going, wanting to do more and more in record. When you think of the crowd. Well, let's, let's go straight into the following year, 1988, which I think is one of your most successful years in Calypso. You got as far as the semi-finals, you were in the Queen Show, you were in Young Kings, and uh, there were two tunes that you did. I want to talk first about Come Together. Who composed that and uh, what was the intent? Come Together was composed by Wayne McDonald, another, Kassman. yeah, another Calypsonian, whose name is Kasman, and um, I think he did a very good job on that. Mm -hmm. It was bringing the people together, come together. The two the different races. Yeah. Now, you had some problems in the first time, you'd be, because I remember you were not singing in the tent, and then you started to sing it in competition, and it looked like the first time you performed it, that you were not entirely with the music, so that you had some problems, but you know, by the time you, you had um, sung it a few times, it was getting over well. But I distinctly remember, and I'm sure you will too, that you had a rough reception the first time you sang the tune. How did you deal with um, an adverse crowd reaction? Well, the crowd wasn't expecting, you know, a type of song like Come Together from me. You know, they wanted more something more party-ish and I have learned to accept whatever the crowd gives if they like the song they would be you know they would give me more um, encouragement and when I sang come together it was my very first time singing a song like that and the crowd didn't that like the song that I well for the first time hearing me singing it, they didn't really um, like the song, but coming to hear it over and over and over and over, that is where it started getting more popularity. 25 years of solid sweat and tears. With little skill, we faced the journey uphill. And the effort needs everyone's support. Opportunity to build this little country. 25 years of solid sweat and tears. With little skill, we face the journey uphill. And the effort needs everyone's support. Yes, you and me to carve out our unity. Experience has shown that independence. No forces us to become much more conscious. So forget rain and let us seek to embrace an opportunity to build this little country. So I beg you, 
Come together and stand for red, white, and black. Come together, this ain't no time to buffer. Come together and make a contribution. Come together, let's mold a better nation. So let's come together. I ain't want no backing. All right now, Mr. Bissess, and this is amazing, that a crowd could one minute show you toilet paper for the first tune, and then by the second tune, Mr. Bissess, everybody was dancing. How did you deal with this sudden change in mood of the audience? Well, after dealing with the first song and showing me, <laughs> well, after seeing what the crowd wanted and um, what they really wanted is, you know, they wanted a more fat dance, so when I came out with my um, roll up the tassa and started moving on stage, it was a totally different audience mm -hmm. compared to the first song. Have you had um, a lot of negative reactions from people off stage saying that you shouldn't be singing Calypso? Well, yes, a lot. Being an Indian, I shouldn't be singing um, Calypso, and I got I got a few critics also that I'm um, singing Calypso, which is not for Indian women. But I think living in Trinidad, Calypso is for everybody. Well said. The following year, you went on to the, the Bucks uh, Calypso tent, and I remember 
that you, you started the season a little late, but from the time you hit the stage with the two tunes that you had that year, Hotter Than a Chula and Pepper, that you were like one of the stars of that Calypso tent. Let this is what, how they wanted me to keep on going. Mm -hmm. That it must be two party type songs. Do you think that uh, as an artist that you should always sing what the public wants or what you want? Well, being an artist, I would like to sing what I want, but the public have a lot to say about that. Mm -hmm. Because well, um, yeah. they, if they say the song is good, the song is good. If they don't like your song, well, your song is not good. Right. <laughs> well, it was good that you were recognized later that year by NJAC and you were awarded a top 20 award for the tune Hotter Than a Chula. Um, can you recall receiving that award? I received a, a, a plaque mm -hmm. for Hotter Than a Chula and I was very surprised knowing that my song hit the first top 20. Yeah. Well, the following year, we saw a different Drupati singing two tunes, This Land is Mine and Free Mandela. And um, what accounted for the change from the party type songs, the songs which had stronger lyrics, more message than, you know, than before? Well, the writers, and um, they see that um, what the topic was so they wanted to write what the topic uh, on the topic then, mm -hmm. and that time was free Mandela.
Sofia loyal queen damsamo. No escape to leave, sleep up in Rivonia. So call the elders to Mandela. Bring the gate and let's complete this marriage proper. Let every heart and every soul that cries for freedom. And being in Trinidad, this is where the idea came up of writing This Land Is Mine. Mm -hmm. My Sweat, My Spine. Yeah. My Secret Ride. Oh, very good, yeah. This land is mine. My sweat, my spine. My secret shrine. My treasury. Ancestral tears. Invented tears. Mean for my shares. My legacy. The reception wasn't good because um, they they wanted me to do more party tunes and um, it's time the artists do what they want. For change. Yeah, so the, the crowd didn't accept that too um, well because of of, of the lyrics and the strong lyrics and, and um, mm -hmm. messages in the song. Have you ever made any effort to compose your own material? No, I would say no, not as yet. Not as yet. Do yeah. you have intentions? Yes, I have intentions because I take pen and paper and sit down or, you know, to put down a few lines here and there and, well, maybe later on I'll be doing my own songs. Right. What, uh, how do you go about do choosing what you sing for a particular season do you depend on your songwriters or your managers or do you get involved in saying i like this tune i will i feel i could do justice to this tune well in some topics i do pick some topics and say what i want to sing and um, sometimes the writers think that you know whatever songs they write that this should be good for me to sing for to sing mm -hmm. so there is me and the writer and you work together? Yeah. Well, the following year, Ray Holman did a nice piece, Special Brew. What how, what caused the relationship between you and Ray Holman to do that tune, Special Brew? Well, I met Ray actually in Lesson Paul studio, and um, while doing my song there, uh, we sat and we had a little chat. Uh, Ray came out with the idea that why don't I do a pan tune? And I just jumped it because I wanted to do something in, in that direction then. Not only strong lyrics or anything like that, but I also wanted to do a fun tune. That pan tune was a really strong tune, and I think Karak Tokyo played that tune yeah. on pan. Did yeah. you actually go to the panorama and hear them put over the tune? Oh, sure, I did. <laughs> I even I even waved the flag in front of Karak mm. Tokyo. What, is, what, what, is, what feeling do you get when you sing a calypso and then you hear the pan playing it and developing it? 
to that great extent? What, um, what feelings? Well, you can't really talk about the feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a feeling that no one could ever express. You know, hearing that melodious pan, you sing, you're singing the um, calypso and then hearing it played, the tune played on pans, it's so, it is so sweet. Mm -hmm. Pan tune is real sweet. <laughs> So that was just something special for you. Special brew, that was special <laughs> brew. <laughs> Special brew. That was special <laughs> brew. <laughs> and the other tune that you had, Tassa. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Just, it, I remember just the, the tune was just called Tassa, the second tune that you sang that year. Uh-huh. That's what, that was Give Them Tassa. Give Them Tassa. Uh. Well, since I sang the pan, you know, the pan tune, special brew, mm -hmm. I thought of singing, mm -hmm. bringing on a Tassa, um, Give Them Tassa in the soca, Give Them Tassa, to join the Tassa and the soca together. Right. <laughs> This year, Careless Drivers was a monster hit. It, at one time, it, it had the, the parties 
it was ruling the parties and it looked like it was in a strong position for a road march. Tell us about 1993 and what it meant for you. In 1993, I, it, that song was a big bang also. It came out just like Mr. Bicessa. And when I sang the song in the studio, I never thought it would have been this big. It was a monster hit, and, but it just took Trinidad like storm again, mm -hmm. <laughs> once again. And in all the parties, people were going crazy over the song. Mm -hmm. I remember you going from place to place, sometimes singing the three, four different locations. Um, even the, the night of the Soka Monarch, I think you had to come from singing in San Fernando to come and sing at the Soka Monarch. And what, what did you go through that night? Well, I had to do a, lo a lot of hustling. And um, I had jobs like in San Fernando. Then I had to come and sing in the tent. From the tent, I went. Um, Soka Monarch? No, I went somewhere else and then the Soka Monarch. I reached in time though. <laughs> <laughs> how, was, how was the performance and the reaction of the crowd? Well, my performance was great. Always is great on stage. And um, the crowd, they were very. The crowd always act, you know. Because this song is a, such a big song, they love this song. If I stand on stage and I don't dance or anything or move, the crowd won't even accept me. Mm -hmm. they, they, well, the crowd have to see me moving, and I also have to see the crowd moving. It works together. If they move, I move more. If I move, they move more. Mm -hmm. So they just love to see me on stage. Your career is relatively short, just 1987 to now. Where do you see your career going? I have big plans for my career. <laughs> first, I would like to reach in the firm, big yard, and that is my first aim, to reach the big yard. I'll keep on every year and every year until I reach the big yard. I love what I do, and I'll keep on doing it. Anything you'd like to say to your fans? I want to say thank to all my fans who supported me and um, my music arrangers and everyone out there 
who put me where I am today. today. And uh, I, would, I would like to say thanks to each and every one.